Hey, it's Nick Penditis here from Royal Page Performance Realty in Ottawa. <clears throat> and this week's Nick Answers Reddit is a bit of an informal one from the couch here as uh, I'm solo parenting tonight and wanted to make sure I got this off for you. Okay, so this week's question is from a Redditor who is asking how one determines price without a realtor. So this is what they say. I'm selling my house without realtor. House appraiser says 550K, but I believe the comparable sales were sold using a realtor. Should I list it lower by about half of a typical reals, realtor's commission amount? I feel a bit odd asking for two different prices depending on if the buyer uses a realtor or not. It's kind of like if you went to a store and there were two different prices listed, one for cash and one for credit card. So thanks in advance. Okay, so I have, I have an answer for this. Uh, full disclosure here, of course I am a realtor. Uh, so obviously I have some bias here and I do think that the services of a realtor are valuable, but even if that's not where you stand, I have some perspective here that you may find valuable. <clears throat> so number one, let's just talk about selling with a real, without a realtor. It is totally doable. I do not want to be uh, one of those people who come on and say, you absolutely have to use a realtor. You're going to be best off every time. Selling without a realtor is the right path for some people. It is totally doable, but you need to know that you're going to take on the tasks that you would expect a good professional realtor to do on your behalf to maximize the sale price and to minimize the time on market. So some of these things are accurate list pricing, which this post is mainly about. We'll come back to that. Uh, staging. So there doesn't have to be a full physical stage. However, spend the money for a staging consultation when you list your home or when you're preparing to list your home. It's only going to cost you around 250 bucks in most markets. And you will have a professional that's going to walk through your home point out what's working well, point out what you can do to show off your home to the best effect. Staging does not necessarily mean bringing new things in um, and paying for physical staging. In most cases, what a stager is going to tell you to do is take what you already have and arrange it and do touch-ups and clean-ups and things like that to show your stuff to its best effect. It is absolutely worth the money. I include professional stagers on every one of our listings if our clients want it. Uh, at no cost to them, it's all included in the in the um, commission. So, which shows that you know we I believe in it enough that uh, that I've seen the results and I think that it's worthwhile for you as well. Number two is a pre-list home inspection. These can be controversial because again, you're having somebody come in and look for the flaws in your home. Now, the the reason that we do we include a pre-list home inspection with our listings, and in our market they cost somewhere between about five and five fifty. Uh, plus HST, I include them for two reasons. Number one is that they uncover any surprises that might be there in your home uh, in terms of physical condition. Surprises are a bad thing if you are a seller. You don't want to get all the way to a sale of a home and then have it fall apart because a buyer has found something unexpected and worse, thinks that, thinks that you've hidden it. Uh, second, a good home... So. The first reason is you get to get ahead of those surprises. You can get quotes for them. You can get things fixed or simply you can disclose and you can price your property accordingly. The second reason you do a pre-list home inspection is because it becomes a great selling tool. So a good home inspection is a marketing tool that you can show a buyer and say, yes, we've had a nice, a, like a good, clean home inspection from a reputable company. This will make them more confident in stepping forward with an offer. Now, <clears throat> You may have on these first two points, you may have people say, well, in my market, homes are selling themselves. Bullshit. Sorry. The homes do not sell themselves. You need to take some work to show it to its best effect. Yes, your home may sell, but if you want to maximize what you get for it and minimize the time on market, use the tools that are available to you. They are there for a reason. Third is professional cleaning. Again, same sort of thing. Spend the money to have a thorough cleaning. I mean, Scrub as if you are scrubbing for surgery. Uh, have it done before photos. Even clean homeowners, even when I go into a house and it is clean, um, cleaners, you know, a clean homeowner doesn't generally clean to the same quality that a really good housekeeper, like a house cleaner, is going to do. So splurge on it. It makes it easy to keep up during the listing and it makes a difference to buyers who are going to bring, bring better quality offers and are going to be, be more likely to bring an offer for you. Uh, great photography and videography. I mean, that's that should be a given. The minimum you need to have that you should have to show off your house to the best effect is high quality HDR photography. 
um, video walkthrough and floor plans. Those are, I think, table stakes in most markets these days. And then there's lots more that a realtor can do. I mean, it gets a little bit tricky as a homeowner, but do those three things at least. Uh, MLS access. So there are good companies uh, in every market in the country, no matter where you live, that's going to help you as a for sale by owner seller list your home on the MLS. So this is where it's going to be the most visible. And this is how you're going to attract a lot of buyers. Um, if you just list it on Kijiji and Facebook Marketplace, you're going to get Kijiji and Facebook Marketplace type buyers. That is to say, tire kickers, often not very good quality, and people who are looking to bargain you down a lot. Whereas if you, you know, list it on MLS, uh, it's going to be compared apples to apples with other homes that are in your neighborhood, and it's more likely you're going to get a good offer for it. Okay, so let's get into the meat of your question, which is accurate pricing. So I see that you've enlisted a professional appraiser already, which is awesome. Uh, but in some markets and for some types of homes, the professional appraiser, they're bound by a very formula, formulaic approach because they work with banks and lenders and they have to be able to defend that. Uh, their, uh, their numbers can come in off of the true market value, which is the value that you're going to sell it at. So as another Redditor in this uh, thread mentioned, you can ask two or three realtors, even if you are not going to work with them to create opinions of market value for you. But unlike his suggestion, don't deceive them. I mean, be upfront about it. If you're going to interview two or three realtors, you know, be clear when you're talking to us, just say, uh, so that you're not asking us to do a bunch of work with absolutely no hope of getting hired. Uh, go to us and say, hey, I am planning on listing my home by myself. I would love to get an opinion of value for you with the idea that if I am not successful, then I would like to hire you as my realtor. So uh, I'm interviewing two other realtors. And as long as you're clear and upfront with that, a lot of realtors are going to take you up on that offer. They see it as a chance to be interviewed. Uh, and it's, you know, you're going to get a good authentic valuation for your home. Um, this thing keeps things open and honest. And it gives that realtor an option to opt out if they don't feel that it's a good use of their time to do this for you. I mean, some of us are busy and we don't have time to, to help somebody price their home when they're not going to use us, uh, but others will. So, and and there are, I mean, you can catch a really great realtor at a, at a quiet moment. If he, he needs the listing, there's a good chance he's gonna come talk to you. Um, what else do I wanna say? If you're also looking for market uh, knowledge in terms of sale prices, in terms of pricing for yourself, uh, House Sigma and lots of other uh, sites like that may be available in your area where it gives you access to some sold past sold prices. Um, those are good for kind of fact checking the opinions of your appraiser and your realtor that you work with. Next is factoring buyer agents commission. I actually had to re reread your uh, question a couple of times there to get an idea of what you meant by pricing at two different prices. And I think what you mean is offering a price to buyers that don't have a buyer's agent and a higher price for buyers that do have a buyer's agent. Skip that. The only price for your house is the market price. It's the price that it's going to sell for. You can price it above it, or you can put your list price below it, but the price it's going to sell at, if you've marketed properly, is the correct market price. That does not factor in whether there's a buyer agent or not. The price is, I mean, the price is the price. So here are the scenarios that you might run into. So first of all, you might offer commission to a buyer's realtor. You might offer commission that's anywhere from $1 all the way up to whatever kind of market rate is for your neighborhood. Um, and this that market rate varies a lot by your city, your province, and what kind of, um, what kind of home you have. What happens is if you sell your house and you offer in commission, part of that closing cost gets directed to the buyer's agent. Uh, or you could offer no commission to a buyer's realtor. I mean, as a realtor, do I love that? No, but I mean, it's a totally valid strategy. So buyers who have a realtor are going to be responsible for paying their realtor directly on top of the sale price, or they're going to negotiate with you back and forth to have it included. Well, I mean, you can always negotiate down the line to have it included, even if you say you're not going to include it. So if the buyer pays directly to their realtor, they may just simply offer you less for your house. And it's during that negotiation, you can decide what makes the most sense for you math wise. Uh, okay, so what about steering? So steering is a practice where a buyer's realtor guides their clients away from your home because you're not offering compensation that's satisfactory to the realtor. Uh, first of all, it's a despicable practice. It's, uh, it's illegal 
And but it did gain it does happen sometimes and it gained notoriety because of a CBC article back in 2021 that I've linked to here. But steering, I mean, like I said, steering happens and I've reported realtors who who've said that they've done it because it's I mean, we need to weed those types of realtors out of all marketplaces. But unfortunately, no, sorry, fortunately, it's probably far less widespread than some may believe. So the best defense against steering is number one, to make sure your property is on the MLS because then it's getting compared to all the other properties on the MLS and price appropriately to, to the market. If you are priced well above the market value for, for your home, it's not that the realtors are, and buyers are steering away from your house. It's that they're not seeing it and they don't want to go to your house because they see that it's overpriced. And a lot of times for sale by owners mistake that for realtor steering. Um, but if it's priced appropriately and it's on the MLS, any, you know, buyers who are serious are going to see that it's visible to everyone who can view the MLS, you know, realtor.ca or their realtors portal or Remax or Royal Apache websites or whatever, they're going to insist on being able to see it. And no amount of, you know, supposed steering from a realtor is going to get, you know, keep them from going to visit that property. Uh, negotiation. So this is a place where a lot of uh, for sale by owner sellers trip themselves up. So as a non-realtor, it's less likely that you're going to negotiate that you'd negotiate on a regular basis. So a few tips for you if you are selling your own home and listing on your own. So number one is know your comparables and be able to support your listing price. Too many for sale by owner sellers aren't confident in their listing price because they don't have it backed up by data. So you know, as a realtor, we're able to take advantage of those kind of sellers and negotiations and get a really good price for our buyer client, because that's what we're trying to do on our side. Or conversely, you get the sellers that I mentioned before that are too emotional, they're too stuck on a high price, and they miss out on a good realistic offer from a serious buyer. They stay on the market too long, and eventually they have to reduce their price for more than they normally would have, because there's a stigma attached with staying on the market for so long. Uh, so having good data and pricing appropriately is your is your best uh, best defense here. Uh, don't get emotionally involved. There are a lot of things that are frustrating about selling your home. Uh, it's easier said than done. I mean, I get annoyed sometimes with realtors or sellers when I'm on the buyer side, uh, and it is your home after all. But try and remain detached from you know letting your emotions through during negotiation. Some agents and their clients can be really aggressive. They come in really hard and uh, they try and get you off your balance when they're negotiating. Uh, some are just poor communicators. They do any number of things that can kind of get under your skin. So don't let it get to you because you will make poor decisions negotiating wise if you're ticked off. Either you're gonna refuse to work with a buyer who might be a decent buyer, maybe their agent's just a jerk, or maybe you're going to get frustrated and you're gonna let a buyer wear you down until finally you take a price that's lower than really you should. So I hope that information is helpful for you. I hope that advice is, uh, is taken in the way it's intended. It's intended to be helpful here. And good luck on the listing and sale. So if I think of anything else, I'll add it to my post. Bye for now.